I am now introducing Insane Ian. Achievement unlocked! Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. Because that's what I am, and that's what I do, and that's what this is, and that's why you're here, and that's why this week I'm reacting to songs by some friends of mine. This week I'm reacting to Lower Decks Keep It Movin' by The Great Luke Ski and Hot Topic by That Lucky Panda. If this is your first time joining us, yes, I am a comedy musician and I react exclusively to comedy music. What that means for you is that I'm going to pause the video. Kind of a lot, actually. This way I'm not talking over or laughing over the jokes and missing them. This way I can discuss how the lyrics and video work in tandem to help enhance the comedy. Sometimes I'm summarizing. Sometimes I'm analyzing. Sometimes I'm just sitting back and laughing my damn head off. It's a crapshoot whatever you're going to get, but I think it's a good time anyway. If you like that sort of thing, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my own comedy and music early, all sorts of other perks. But anyway, all of that out of the way, let us dive in to these two videos. Uh, I, I was, it was actually going to be four videos, but I realized that's going to be really long, and I'm splitting it up over this week. Uh, I had intended on doing this last week, but certain things happened in the country last week that made it difficult to want to do a video. Uh, first song here, Lower Decks, Keep It Moving. Luke Ski uh, is a huge uh, Star Trek fan. Luke Ski is also uh, the most requested artist of the 21st century on the Dr. Demento show. So if you aren't aware who the great Luke Ski is, get your damn self educated. Uh, he is the emissary of rap dementia. He is the uh, he's done a lot of uh, comedy songs on various subjects in pop culture, but uh, a lot of his most popular songs are the songs about Star Trek. Uh, in fact, he helped curate uh, a Dr. Demento show this past weekend uh, that was all Star Trek themed comedy songs. So, uh, you know, uh, I first met Luke at a Star Trek convention. Uh, so, there, you know, this is his bread and butter. He had a, a song that was uh, What's Up, Spock, which was a parody of What's Up, Doc, Can We Rock, uh, that he did about many of the original several series, and then other versions, other TV series got added to it later. Uh, Devo Spice covered it recently. This is a long intro, I know. I don't care. It, it, whatever. I'm giving some people some preamble for things that they might not be aware of. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So this is a song about the new show. Uh, well, not new show. It's in five seasons now of Star Trek Lower Decks. If you're not watching Lower Decks, by the way, do that. And also, like, help save the show. It hit its fifth season. Uh, Paramount Plus decided to cancel the show, but the people who are working on the show don't want it to end. Uh, Prodigy, Star Trek Prodigy, uh, ran into the same thing. It got off of Paramount Plus, and then Netflix picked it up for its second season. Uh, so hopefully, another place will pick up Lower Decks for some continued seasons, because not only is this show hilarious, it is also one of the most Trek shows out there. With all of Trek, it, it it references a lot of old stuff from the original series, from the next gen series, from the original animated series. Uh, lots of Trek lore thrown into this. It's good stuff. Let's check out Luke's song. After that large preamble. Gee, I wonder if this song is about lower decks. Call and response stuff is always good. It's always a good way to get the crowd pumping uh, and, and ready for your song. I dig that. Yes, as I was saying, they go through a lot of the the stuff in the television series that have come before, uh, all the messes from the last generation, and it cuts to a shot of. Oh. Uh, Here, so enter Captain Freeman warping through each constellation to swing by all the messes from the last. From the original animated series. Yes, I know. 
people out there who say if you hit the uh, the comma and period buttons you can advance frame by frame. No, I can't. Doesn't work on this laptop. Everybody keeps telling me. Doesn't work. Also, if the audio sounds crunchy, I'm sorry. I've adjusted every audio setting I can try to adjust. Uh, it's slightly better when I am doing it, but I never hear it crunching on my end until I get into the edit. So if it is crunchy in this video, I'm sorry. Anyway, regardless, yes, going through a lot of the other things, there is from the original Star Trek animated series, all the messes. There's a lot of references, like uh, Tendi being the Orion on the ship, uh, being a pirate of Orion, being the, the, the what is it, the goddess of the winter, winter queen or something like that. Uh, she, the, the, the Pirates of Orion was a episode of Star Trek, the original animated series, and the ships that the Orions had were, came from that episode. That episode was written by a friend of mine, Bob Greenberger, one of the first scripts he ever submitted to anything. He was like 17 years old, uh, writing scripts. Uh, and, and that was his first script getting picked up. I've known Bob through Star Trek conventions for ages. Uh, and uh, so having that get referenced in the new show, very exciting. Um, this is going to be a lot of Star Trek references, so, you know, prepare yourselves for that. My phone is blowing up for some reason, whatever. All right. Last generation, happy, commander is also handsome and vain. Dr. Otto likes to cattle while it's wearing a complaint. Luke has this incredible ability, and I, I, I've said this about his songs a lot. Uh, a lot of his internal rhyme schemes are really, really great, but he has more punchlines per capita in a song than most comedy songwriters. Uh, just in the... Commander Ransom is also handsome and vain. You got your internal rhyme scheme there. Dr. Anna, who is a cat-like creature, likes to caterwaul and swear and complain. Caterwaul is a thing that cats do. They, they The wailing that the cats do is caterwauling. Yeah, that's a... it's great. Anna likes to caterwaul and swear and complain. And Shax wants to blow up the warp core no matter where we go to deal with each and every sci-fi scenario. Oh, it's so good. And no matter where we go, scenario. And then it cuts to, so what's the scenario? Uh, a classic hip-hop song. Uh, well, I'm blanking on who does that song all of a sudden. Shit. I want to say De La Soul, but that might not be right. I'm sorry if I get that wrong. Uh. <laughs> so instead of what's the scenario, what's the Cerritos? It's the ship from, from Lord X. California class and rotten dairy style as we're cruising every prime timeline light mile but forget about the bridge and come on down my friends cause the lower decks is where the real action begins yes the the series is not about the bridge crew as most shows in the Trek universe are it's about the people who are you know ensigns or lower ranked people who work on the maintenance and the regular kind of upkeep of the ship and 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 the, the people you hear less about, the people who are on the away team as the second or third, not the people who are in the command of the, the away team. And uh, that's always, uh, it, it's an interesting angle to take for this show. Uh, I, I really enjoy that, and I really enjoy what's like, here's our bridge crew, but that's not the focus of the song. They were going to, you know, we take, you know, maybe a minute to, to explore that. And then here's the ship. It's got California class and Roddenberry style. Uh, the California class ships are, are, you know, it's a style of ship that is in the Trek universe. They were called California class because of a certain shape and where the nacelles are on them. And Roddenberry style, of course, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Good stuff. And there's your chorus. Came from the line, keep it moving, lower decks, of course. You know, move along, but uh, no, lower decks keeps it moving. The ship would, wouldn't be running as well if it weren't for the people in the lower decks. That's good stuff. I love this because it's using all the clips from the show. This is a great video. Uh, yeah. She don't want to rank up because she can't stand the work. She helped Elks around. 
own way and if you try to dispute she'll say shut up and give you a sarcastic Vulcan salute <laughs> I love Mariner's, uh, a as he says in the song, sarcastic salute. It's like, she uses it like flipping somebody off. You know, throwing up live long and prospers as she's like, you know, piecing out of a room. Uh, Mariner is incredible and hilarious. Uh, and, and yes, she is the daughter of the captain, of Captain Freeman, but... Uh, going by her her middle name instead of her last name, so people didn't know that. Spoiler alert! If you're not watching, uh, it's it's always fun to give a spoiler alert after you spoil something. I'm smart. I love that shot. Uh, I, I I love that shot of. I love that shot that it's just frozen on, but of of her rocking and Tendi doing the drums, Tendi the Orion, uh, and and Boimler not sure what to even do there. This this gets used as a as a gif a lot. Uh, I love it. It's good stuff. Guitar. She thinks caves are horrific and Jennifer is terrific, and you'll find that all her references are weirdly specific. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, there's some live-action stuff here, because the voice actors for Mariner and Boimler played Mariner and Boimler in live-action in a crossover episode on Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds. It's fantastic. It's a great episode. Uh, it helps that the voice actors look a lot like their characters anyway. Uh, Tandy, uh, Tandy Newsom. I th think is her name. I'm, I'm sorry if I, I got that first name wrong. And Jack Quaid, as Boimler, uh, are the voice actors there. And yes, they, they played them in live action. Really, yeah, all the references, weirdly specific. Yes, there's a lot of references to a lot of Trek stuff that me, even me being a, a lifelong Star Trek fan raised in the faith uh, ever since I was born, there's some references that go over my head. Uh, and just, there's a, there's a, so many weirdly specific things in this show, but it's all surrounded by such great comedy, and also such great sci-fi stuff that makes it, like, such a great Trek show. And there's, and there's such a great Luke Ski reference style lyric. He's just one of the boys, because Jack Quaid plays Huey on The Boys. Uh, uh, the the actor who does the voice for Boimler uh, is on a is on the other network. I guess you could call it streaming network because they're that's what they are now. Streaming streaming networks are different things now. You know, Paramount Plus has all the Trek shows, but Amazon has the Boys, and yeah, so he plays Huey on the Boys, a part that in the comics was supposed to be. Uh, that, you know, in the comics is drawn to look like Simon Pegg, who now on the TV show, Simon Pegg plays Huey's father instead, because that's the way time works. He was too old to play Huey. Uh, but yes, it's, a, it's another reference within the reference in the lyrics that Luke Ski does so well. He even references his own songs in his songs. That's what makes him the great Luke Ski. Because he knows that he has already this pedigree of, of popularity in songs and stuff on the Dr. Demento show. What's Up Spot Can We Rock is... He, he's played that at... He's performed that at Star Trek conventions and at live performances and at any other cons. Uh, and it's it's one of the bigger uh, comedy hip hop songs and, and nerdcore songs that he's been known for for decades. Uh, you know, I, I one of the only things I can think that would be more popular would be maybe hit one of his Star Wars songs, which like you know, uh, Grease Wars, where he does parodies of songs from Greece in order as a parody of. About Star Wars, uh, a lot of references. Uh, man, I'm just losing my mind. Let's take it back a little bit. Suckled by some giant spider cow livestock. That's a that's a lyric, and uh, it's a, 
a thing I would not like to relive even in seeing it, let alone being Boimler. Spider cow livestock, and he traveled back in time to ask what's up, Spock? Can we rock about my hollow work was hunted by Cranch, and what prefer than raisin raisins on his family ranch? Raisin raisins. It's just good. Got to be the acting captain, because his skills are improven. I wonder if that's the lead up to the chorus line. Uh, but also, acting captain has just a beautiful internal rhyme kind of feeling. I love that. Got to be the acting captain because the skills are improving. You can take it to the box. Lower decks, keep it moving. Lower decks, 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 just lower decks, lower decks. I love, I love the the beat on this song i didn't notice it because the only time i the only other time i've heard this song is when luke performed it live at thump fest back at the beginning of october and as i was waiting to do my reaction to the the full music video to kind of give it more of a of a listen and there is this kind of alexander courage uh feeling because alexander courage did the the Star Trek theme song for the first movie and that first movie theme song got used for Next Generation um, and there is this this trumpet happening in the background that sounds a little bit like the the theme song to to Lower Decks but also just like it, it's you know triumphant space music set to a beat too I can't tell if it's actually the theme song um, but, uh, it's at least an approximation of it, or an approximation of a Trek-feeling song for this beat. Um, and that's the same shot, just with the Deal With It glasses on it, from the original Keep It Moving Lower Decks line. The sound clips that he chooses for his songs too always invoke such a great feeling of like the 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 feeling he's trying to get across in his song, and Boimler freaking out, yelling, "I failed the Kobayashi Maru seventeen times, Mother Trekker." Uh, it, he doesn't say Trekker. Uh, is just perfect. Yeah, it just to give you like the example of how. Absolutely nuts these this this crew of characters are. You could say she's kind of green, kind of new, she's the newbie. Also she's Orion, so of course she's green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mistress of the Winter Constellations. I said the Princess of the Winter Queen. I... Pfft, whatever. I got it wrong. It's fine. I'm only watching the show and I can't remember all the words. Uh, yes, so it, it turns out that Tendi is also, like, Orion royalty and also a badass assassin. And she's like, I don't want to be a badass assassin. I want to work for Starfleet. Uh, which is, you know, when we have alien races that we've seen be kind of confrontational from original Trek, you know, like when we finally had a Klingon on the bridge crew, when we knew Klingons to be the bad guys of the series for the longest time, but when, when Next Gen had Worf, that was kind of surprising, and now having an Orion on the crew is kind of surprising and interesting, and it just shows the... It, sh it shows Idik, which is, you know, Trek's big, you know, infinite diversity and infinite combinations, you know? People always say, when did Star Trek get woke? Uh, 1969, <laughs> when the show came out, or 67, whenever the show premiered. It's always been like that. It's always been fucking woke. Uh, and, and we're not just seeing, like, the diversity in, in the races and creeds that we know of, but now we're seeing diversity in alien species as well, being part of Starfleet and being part of their mission of science. Uh, and that's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, I love that. Orion, but you'd rather be a ray of optimistic sunshine. Yes. Rutherford's a pal because they're both kind of hokey. If you need the shit fixed, he'll give a curve. Okie dokie. He's a like, lining up lyrics with sound bites, it's so good. I, I try to do it occasionally with some of my songs. I did it with my Game Grump song. Uh, and it's just, it, they're, they're, 
Luke has this certain style with it. He he does it in in kind of a lot of songs. He like he likes using either sound clips because he does a lot of pop culture songs. So he likes either using sound clips or recreating the sound clips uh, himself. Uh, you know, have, with him saying the lines instead, but like doing it as a cut in for the for the sound clip. Mm -hmm. Uh, to sound like it came from somewhere else, rather than it's you know him doing an impression or something. He's, I mean, his impressions also are pretty fantastic, uh, but uh, it, it is it is kind of an earmark of a Luke Ski song to have kind of uh, these type of sound clips repeating in here. There was one line back here that I wanted to go back. Yeah, this she taught oh, peanut hamper. That was what that was it. She, uh, he he mentions peanut hamper, which is this flying robot thing that ends up being like is it a villain of the show is it not i i i'm still curious about peanut hammer peanut hamper uh like there are times when they're good and not good and it gets confusing and so much going on in this show and we're only five seasons in it's great green she used her science skills to make a dog who could fly and she made friends with peanut hammer till she left us to die she's the mistress of the winter constellations on orion but she'd rather be a ray of optimistic sunshine yes. rutherford's a guy because they're both kind of hokey if you need the shit fixed he'll give a curve okay, okay. he's a genius side for with crazy implant powers always crammed in jeffrey's rooms with devonna for hours he wants to move the hall but he'll never eat a pear and when he stresses mark twain he says i do declare so there's this whole thing where, to settle arguments, uh, Boimler and Rutherford will just dress both as Mark Twain and and go to the holodeck to, to, to hash things out as Mark Twain. They, initially, they one wanted to be Twain and the other, like, they, they each, separately from each other, wanted to be Mark Twain and they both showed up as Mark Twain and then they decided, let's just both be Mark Twain. And then it became a thing. Uh, and, and it's just, it's a weird through line. It's another one of those just goofy things that they, that they have on the show that is so ridiculous, but it's a running gag that I love. Uh, Talyn is kind of new to the show. She didn't start out in the first couple seasons. She joined, I think, like season three or four, and, uh, she reminds me of, uh, Kim Cattrall's character, from Star Trek VI, um, only obviously not a villain. Uh, spoiler for Star Trek VI if you haven't seen it. That movie's over 20 years old. Whatever. Um, yeah, uh, just just something about her, especially with that Vulcan haircut that reminds me of of Valeris. I think the character's name was uh, from Star Trek VI. Star Trek VI. Hugely underrated. One of my favorite. I love the Undiscovered Country. Uh, I love the director's cut of it even more because it actually gives a lot more backstory to a lot of the political things that are happening in it. It's a it's a much better cut of the movie. Um, I'm showing my my nerd stuff. Yeah, Rutherford uh, is the science guy and just always happy to be working and happy to repairing things and also taking things apart and discovering new sciencey things. It's good. Let's promote the Hulk and he'll never eat a pear And when he stresses Mark Twain he says I do declare And even though Tillman has no interest in that activity She's still stuck around for all the fun and all the levity And Venture so sublime that Volk is not denied It's just the best heck and trek since Deep Space Nine It is the best heck and trek since Deep Space Nine uh, I was a big Voyager fan I, uh, I wasn't as big into DS9 as uh, my compatriots, I lost interest in DS9 right as it turned around and started getting good for everybody else. Um, so I should go back and watch some Deep Space Nine, and I know Luke will probably be in the comments going, yes, you should be watching Deep Space Nine, uh, as are probably some other Trek fans. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I've i picked up a lot of, of Trek from memes <laughs> when it comes to DS9 more than actually watching the show myself. So yes, we suddenly turned the chant into Deep Space Nine and he's like, wait, no, this is a song about Lower Decks. That's great. I love that. Yeah, logic, bitch. 
I also too must be Vulcan as a mother trekker. Trek yell logic bitch. Oh, I love it. Uh, it's it's so good. Alright. Here's here's the section of the song where where Luke does some pen flexing and uh, works in the names of all the other Trek shows and Trek references into into a verse uh, because that is a thing that Luke is amazingly skilled at. Discovery, Prodigy, two, two of the newer Trek shows. Discovery was the show that was kind of a prequel show uh, to even, I think, I, th I think it takes place between Enterprise and and Classic Trek, or at least at the same time as maybe some Classic Trek. Uh, I haven't watched Discovery at all. My mom really liked it. My, my mom is a dyed-in-the-wool Star Trek fan, obviously, who got, you know, me interested in Trek. She was a Trek fan since before I was born. Uh, and, uh... And, but Strange New Worlds is like an alternate timeline thing of Pike's stuff, stuff before, or maybe not even alternate timeline. It's a, it's Pike before what happens to Pike happens to Pike in classic Trek. Um, short Treks is a series of comedy shorts about Star Trek because that's that's H. John Benjamin. That's the voice of of Bob from Bob's Burgers and Archer from Archer and dozens of other things. So comedy. Let's take it back a little bit here. So come on down below and meet the crew. There's quite a lot to see and you'll make the discovery. We're really quite a prodigy and on our short tracks an epic story and for us I'm like Picard and always on exploring Strange New Worlds. Picard and Strange New Worlds, obviously the Picard series picks up after Next Gen. Strange New Worlds is is the story of Pike and his crew. Um, before, uh, before it, it, you know, he was the captain of the Enterprise before Kirk was the captain of the Enterprise. Um, we picked up with Kirk in the original classic series. Um, what little I've seen of Strange New Worlds, I've really enjoyed. I watched like most of the first season, and then I watched the uh, the crossover episode with Lower Decks. I'm not up on more of the newer Trek shows than I am the classic Trek. I was raised on classic Trek, seen all the the movies and most of the Next Gen movies. I never really got into watching Next Generation. I did watch DS9. I did watch Voyager. Uh, didn't watch a lot of uh, Enterprise, so even though I'm a huge Trek fan, uh, I know that there are other Trek fans who are bigger Trek fans than me. Uh, m my mom watched a lot of uh, classic Trek, wasn't really into Next Gen. We, we watched DS9 together, uh, we watched Voyager together. Uh, she really got into Discovery when that was airing, um, so yeah, it's all over with my family. It's where I got my start in fandom was through Trek. There's just... I don't know what that reference was. Luke, Luke, tell me what the J Jamar Haran is. I don't... I didn't catch, catch that reference. Um... I will say that uh, those characters, again, we're going back and, and, and revealing some of the other people on the crew who aren't working in the lower decks. Billups is voiced by... Uh, oh, God, I suddenly can't remember. He's a, he's a stand-up comic. He's very funny. Um, uh, Kajon is its Marion metaphor speak. You know, it's the, it's the character that is like the Shaka when the walls fell meme which was from a thing that I don't... I've never seen the original episode of that. I know it from the memes. Whoops. Dr. Miglimio. Uh, that's voiced by Paul F. Tompkins, uh, who's a, a stand-up comic, which I just think is great. They literally just did an episode uh, about him and his species and, like, some some dignitaries who were, like, food critics from his species uh, coming aboard the Cerritos as, like, one of the more recent episodes that just aired. Uh, he's, a, he's like, the psychiatrist on the ship, and his species is known for, like, you know, being 
culinary wizards and, and cooks and such like that. So yes. Most of the cats are eating words with his beef. Chief Engineer Bill's a sandy call of the cop, and he'd rather fix the ship than have some Jamaha rye. And he's an AI who is programmed for good until he says he'll rip your eyes out and then cut off your foot. Yeah, Badgy. Badgy is an AI gone mad. And voiced by, uh. Oh god, why. My name is. Uh, my name is blanking on mind. My mind is blanking on names. Good lord. Uh, I couldn't words anymore. Uh, he he played he played the page on 30 Rock, and I cannot think of his name now. Son of a bitch. And I don't want to do any live Googling now. Uh, people will tell me how stupid I am in the comments. It's fine. A CPU and sounds just like Jeffrey Combs, and the Moopsie is a Sounds just like Jeffrey Combs, because it's voiced by Jeffrey Combs. And the Moopsie... The Moopsie is one of the greatest creations we've gotten from Lower Decks. Uh, and I remember this line coming up from the live version, so I'm going to take it back so we can experience all, it all in, in its glory. Man, that shot of, of Badgy just ripping that guy's head off. That is... That is unnecessarily graphic. Cool. Cool. Rip your eyes out and then cut off your foot. A CPU and Agamus sounds just like Jeffrey Combs, and the Moopsie is a Pokemon that's gonna drink your bones. Yeah, that, that's why the Jeffrey Combs line was there, cause that's what Moopsie does. Moopsie will drink your bones. Bones aren't liquid. Moopsie will drink your bones. Moopsie is adorable. Only says Moopsie. That's why he's called a po. That's why Luke called him a Pokemon, cause Moopsie only says Moopsie. Um, people loved Moopsie when Moopsie came out. Uh, all my friends who watched uh, uh, Lower Decks were talking about Moopsie for weeks. <laughs> this next line is great. The prime directive is paramount, plus you won't be so reborn. That's one thing you can trust. <laughs> so, yeah. The prime directive is paramount, plus, because the show is on paramount, plus you won't be story bored. You won't be bored of the story, but also it's animation, so it's got to be storyboarded, which is what Luke does. Luke is an animation storyboarder. If you are uh, hiring in the L.A. area for animation, hire the great Luke Ski, because he is an amazing artist as well. And that's him in the shot. Sing along with the song and keep another season grooving. We're so we strong and lower decks keep it moving. Yes. Save lower decks. Uh, I don't know why the uh, the last chorus there gets uh, knocked out. Apparently, the uh, apparently the version of the video that Luke has up on on YouTube had a soundbite clip and video at the beginning and at the end, and they like got removed. I don't know if, like, YouTube cut them out or if he had to cut them out himself to get the video up there, but uh, that's what, what happened, why it ended abruptly. But, yes, Lower Deck keeps it moving. Lower Decks Keep It Moving by the great Luke Ski. Luke released this as a single as well as putting out an album of all of his Trek songs and parodies. You can find those at lukeski.bandcamp.com as well as on Spotify and various other things. Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Bandcamp, Amazon, SoundCloud, and YouTube Music, of course, all of those good things. And the song that's playing in the credits here is What's Up, Spock. All from the Star Trek comedy song compilation Laugh Long and Prosper by the great Luke Ski. Uh, Luke doing a, uh, a drawing of himself posing as Boimler uh, Boimler did this, and then basically vogued as the shuttle, and not the, uh, the turbo lift doors were shutting. Can we rock? Yeah! What's up, Spock? Here it at lukeski.handcap.com, and as a playlist on Spotify. That's good stuff. Anyway, uh, that was a great song. It's a great video, uh, showcasing a lot of the great stuff about that TV show. Hashtag Save Lower Decks. Uh, let's move on to the next song by another friend of mine. Uh, this is a song by That Lucky Panda. Uh, people know, know him as Lucas. Uh, Lucas has actually been on this channel before. 
uh, back in January, on my birthday, Lucas surprised me by covering two of my songs and releasing them. Uh, this is uh, Lucas's first original comedy song. Lucas has been covering uh, Ninja Sex Party for for a bit, and uh, and and you know doing a lot of other covers as well. Some more serious songs like like covering Ghost released a serious song called Normal. Uh, but this is uh, Lucas's first uh, attempt at writing a comedy song, and uh, has a lyric video for it. So we're checking that out now. Music, uh, uh, there's still more video here. Uh, Professor Shy Guy did the backing track for Star Trek Lower Decks. That's that for the uh, Lower Decks Keep It Moving song. And Zach Hurst did the video. That's phenomenal. Okay, let's move on to the next video. Switching up the style quite a bit. <laughs> I'm inside a hot topic, trying to buy a new fit. I need to be prepared for when I die in that pit. I... <laughs> the little tiny, it's fun in the background of trying to buy a new fit. It's fun. Like, it's so... I'm trying to convince myself that what I'm doing is enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> and also, I have to say, yeah, like, I think this song came about, like, the idea for this song came about from a conversation Lucas and I were having where Luke was, was, was in a hot topic and was saying, he's like, I just, I, I'm in a hot topic and I'm sweating my brains out or something like that. I can't remember what the guy, actual conversation was and I was like, that'd be a great song title. And then it just turned into now a song about Hot Topic. Uh, our, our friend MC Lars uh, of Nerdcore uh, has a song called Hot Topic is not punk rock. So I don't know if this will be matching kind of like the feel of that or not. Obviously, maybe not entirely the feel because that song is hip hop and this not song is not. But we continue. This song took a left turn immediately. <laughs> All right, let's take it back a little bit here because uh, this, you know, you're, you know, you, you, he, he says in here for when I die in the pit, you know, I want to look good if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all my various punk and goth accoutrement from Hot Topic because I'm going to a show and I want to look good when I'm getting thrashed around in the pit. I don't I don't do it for attention, I do it for the bit is something that uh, holy crap can I ever relate to. I love committing to a bit. Committing to a bit like, you know, making sure that you know, I'm not I'm not doing it because I think everyone else will be funny, will think it's funny. Sometimes I commit to a bit because this this is funny to me and I'm going to keep going with this because it's the bit and I'm committed to the bit. Uh, commitment to a bit despite anybody else's uh, like reservations about it, I guess. Like other people might not think it's funny, but the fact that you're still with, going with it and still committed to it, does you know, I have a certain amount of respect for that. Obviously, if it's being offensive or being, like, hurtful to people, I'm not going to be backing you on that. But, like, commitment to a bit that, you know, this may not land, but I'm still committed to it, it's that, it's that part of it that I respect. You know, it's like, it, 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 it may, may not be going over, it may be going over like a lead balloon, but I'm still committed to doing the bit. 
and uh, that dedication is what is what I appreciate. My good intentions will screw me just like this. I got my black leggings, I got my All your typical hot topic. Uh, I used to wear Vans constantly. I used to wear checkerboard Vans uh, up until I got my rainbow check Vans. Uh, I have a pair of Weird Al Vans, because Weird Al wears Vans all the time too, but these are actually like legit, they are for Weird the Al Yankovic story Vans. Um, I won them from uh, Roku and, and Vans. And, uh, and, and I have a pair of Spider-Man Vans. And uh, I used to wear both the Spider-Man Vans or the Weird Al Vans uh, when I would perform live, but uh, I'm old now, and Vans are great skateboarding shoes. I'm not a skateboarder, and they don't have any arch support, so, so I'm, they hurt my feet now. I spend a lot of time walking around, and they... Are not great for that. I, I I have gotten to the I'm the old person in Skechers now, uh, but I still love Vans. Yeah, got cash, got Venmo. If you're gonna pay, you know, a lot of people do the Apple Pay, and I didn't know Hot Topic took Venmo, but whatever. Everybody's moving on to more digital forms of currency. I just opened up Instagram and I got hit with striking photos of a grown ass man. Try to look away but I don't think I can. Now I'm staring at my screen with fifty dollars in my hand and I'm in the middle of the topic I am and the cashier thinks I've lost it. Frothing at the mouth in the middle of Hot Topic. That was, that was the, the line that I said that could be turned into a lyric. There, there we go. That's what it is. Yep. Shop is praise, don't sell, so I'll see myself out. I'll see myself out. Of this Hot Topic, now I'm outside the... <laughs> There's something so beautifully funny about a well-timed and well-placed voice break. Uh, using that for comedic effect and, and timing it so perfectly is so good. Uh, yeah, okay. So, you know, as, as someone who is bisexual themselves, uh, being suddenly distracted by something you were not expecting to be distracted by, by someone that you follow, uh, is, is, yes, hashtag relatable, uh, be they male or female or, uh, othered. Uh, I, uh, there are times when you're like, oh, can't look at that now, need to concentrate on what I'm actually doing. Uh, and sometimes people can't do that, and they have to leave instead of per making their purchases. All right, we have a song concept. I love it. And just that... And just that, that line, I'll see myself, ah, that's so funny. Just like, just the, the nervous energy of that, that noise. Perfect. And I take a deep breath. I decide to go to Spencer's cause their mugs are the best. I was so <laughs> There's so many mugs. I love the backing lines. I, I've mentioned this before on the show, like, it's not just the lead vocals that have to be funny. Having jokes hidden in the background and the backing vocals that you're maybe catching and maybe not are just so perfect. I love that. Only past the lava lamps when something caught my eyes. So I whipped out my phone to take a picture. Oh my fucking Christ. <laughs> I fucking opened up Instagram and I got hit with sexy photos of that man again. <laughs> <laughs> At this 50 year old 10. <laughs> now, since Lucas is a friend of mine, 
I know who this song is about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this person that they're talking about, not my particular cup of tea, um, but I, I do, uh, understand the appeal, but, uh, uh, knowing who this song is about makes this song funnier for me than it will for most other people, probably, but still, it is still a relatable thing of being, like, someone that you, you follow on Instagram, some, we'll say it's a celebrity, a celebrity that you follow on Instagram, not really posting a thirst trap, but just posting a general photo, and you going, holy, why do you have to be this fucking hot and just disturbing my day? Like, it's rude. It's it's rude of you. Honestly, I'm trying to carry forth, and now, and now I have to be thinking about you being hot. And it's relatable. It's relatable. In the back end of a Spencer's I am Really great lyrics here too. Uh, losing my mind, I gotta say it's not my fault, but it's no one's fault but mine. Really, really good lines. Like it, it has that, that build, like, yes, it's a comedy song, but also it's a good song on its own. You know, that's the thing that, that I, I try to stress most in, in these reactions is it, it, it has to work on both levels, on both being comedy and a good song. You know, comedy music, it's, it's both things, so... <laughs> there is there there is so much that is hilarious about this because whether you are bi, pan, or straight, there is a certain element about a relatability to this, and that's what makes comedy work, is it's an extreme situation, but it still has a relatability to it. So, yeah. Man. I am running out of space on this tape, so we're going to finish this reaction here. The, the 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 countdown that that you you hear that you might not supposed to hear the two three four I love shit like that so so to say that that uh, Lucas has a type is is not under question anymore in this song. Um, you like what you like. You follow it. That's pretty fucking hilarious. Frothing at the mouth in the middle of Hot Topic. Uh, freaking the fuck out in the middle of Hot Topic. That's brilliant. A great song. Bravo for your first comedy song, Lucas. That was really funny. Uh, I'm reminded a lot uh, of, of stuff by, like, Ian, Ian Lockwood uh, from that track. So, uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully you folks enjoyed both of these songs. If you did, please 
Uh, check out the originals in the description box below so you can check them out without me yammering all over them. Uh, if you liked this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out like these folks over here do, consider supporting me on Patreon where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, and all sorts of other cool things. Anyway, that's all for today. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Good.